Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Christine Payne. I'm really excited to be here and want to thank you all for being here as well. Uh, and I wanted to say a thank you especially to OpenAI for sponsoring us this summer. Um, it really has been an incredible program. So I thought uh, I would dive right in. Oh, with a presentation that's not clicking. <laughs> Sorry. Um, with some sample generations. Um, so this summer I was working on training an LSTM to generate music. Um, so this first one is a sample when I trained the LSTM on classical piano music. And then when I took the same neural net, and instead of training it on classical music, I trained it on jazz music, um, and then asked it to generate new pieces. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, a nice way to think about music generation is to think about it as a language model problem. Um, so I won't get into the details now, but for language modeling, we usually use an architecture, maybe something like an LSTM or a transformer. And we train it on the task, we give it a prompt sentence, and then, or a sequence of words, and then we ask it, what should the next word be? And once you have a model that's really good at this, it's actually pretty convenient to turn it into a generator. You just take this word that's predicted, feed it back into the model, and then ask it to predict the next word, and so forth. And you can create um, a text or a, a piece of music as long as you'd want. The trouble, of course, is um, what we need to do would be able to translate music into tokens that we could then feed sequentially into a model like this. Um, so people have tried to do this in the past, um, but oftentimes, because it's a, it is a difficult problem, um, we have some pretty strong limitations on what you can do with the music. So, it's kind of clear how if you have one note at a time, um, you could ask the, machine, the, the model to predict the next note. And maybe you can imagine, say, like every time step will have exactly four notes and then predict the next set of four notes. Um, so if you're doing Bach chorales, that could work really well. Um, or another limit you might have is like how many notes you could have. So the lowest note to the highest note, but might be a pretty small range. Um, but I was really curious about, could we extend this and make it more general? The problem is when you start looking at general music, it's really complicated. So, um, you know, effectively you can have any number of notes at any time. <laughs> it could be any combination of that. Um, so I'm defining here what I call a musical time step. And so ideally we want to tell the model that at this moment in time we're playing a D and a B. And then you move forward and you play G. Then you move forward and you play an F. <laughs> and so forth you go and you do a, a G and a C. But here we've run into a problem, right? Because here we notice we're going to try to fit in an extra D, but it's faster than where we were sampling things. And so this causes a problem. So we could imagine sampling more often. Um, but then, you know, this also causes other issues because then we'll end up with lots of moments where nothing's happening at all. And LSTMs don't really love it when you have space, 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 word, space, 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 space. you know, it's, it's not ideal. Um, otherwise, we might be able to have a, a method that's more flexible and has some sort of more complicated notion of time, like how long to wait until the next, next time step. So we have here both our sampling frequency problem and then the problems I no noted before, how wide a note range we want, and if we want to be flexible about how many notes we play at once. So to solve these problems, I'm proposing two different kinds of encodings. Um, and I'm calling these the chord-wise encoding and the note-wise encoding. And I like to think about these in sort of parallel to the language model. So chord-wise is very similar to like a word-based language model. And note-wise is much more the way you do character-by-character -character prediction. So for chord-wise, what I'm doing here, I'm literally, I've only shown some of them here, um, but literally for every 88 of the piano keys, I'm putting 0 or 1 for if the note is being played at that time step. So at the very first moment, you can say um, there are just the two Cs being played. So we have the two ones. You know, you can imagine this could explode pretty quickly. We could have, you know, two to the 88 possible, possible uh, combinations. 
Fortunately, uh, piano music is a lot more predictable than that. We're limited by how many fingers we have um, and what sounds good. So um, I found that in across most of classical music, we had a vocab range of around 55,000. So 55,000 different combinations of notes. The other system I'm proposing is this note-wise system, where here I literally say, first it's going to be C, then another C, then we're going to wait. The wait sort of marks that's the end of this time. You wait for six steps, then you end that first C that's down on the bottom, you play a G, and then you wait again. So it's sort of, it's very much like a character system might be. Um, this system ends up being pretty nice. It has a much smaller vocab size because you only need to know the number of notes you have, the ends, and the weights. Um, and it also has a really nice um, feature that you can pretty easily encode notes that last longer. Um, which I also tried playing around with violin modeling, and there you really need to be able to have notes that last for a long time. So um, I took the results of these and I made a quiz, which I invite people to come across to the table uh, later and try it out. But I have pairs of songs, and one song is a human composed piece, and one is an AI composed piece. And uh, the task is to guess which is which. And uh, encouragingly enough, people are really bad at this. <laughs> Um, it turns out, you know, I was getting most people around twos, threes, ones. A few people got fours, although often people would email me and be like, I'm a professional musician. And I, <laughs> so um, in general, people are finding this hard. Um, so the take home from this is that um, these better encodings can actually lead to some really interesting music generation. Um, and I'm just suggesting two encodings here. I think there's probably a possibility for even more interesting combinations. I'm suggesting you know, maybe we can look at ways of including some known music theory things, thirds, scales, things like that. Um, I tinkered with this a little bit, but I think there's still a lot that can be done. Um, another interesting possibility is that uh, right now I'm training my model on pretty much all composers at once um, and then asking that to generate. It would be really fun to train that and then fine tune it on kind of neat, quirky combinations. I'm suggesting like, what if you smashed Chopin and jazz together or something like that? Uh, I think there could be some fun artistic possibilities. And lastly, um, I think the big problem both for this and then in the language model generation world um, is how you kind of get a longer term structure. So the pieces that I was creating were often really good for the first 30 seconds and even like a minute sounded good. And then you started being, you know, you realize that there's really no long plan going on here. And so um, ideally, you'd love to have some sort of sense of the big picture where you are and then the sort of immediate um, next notes that'll sound good. And in the interest of time, I skipped a lot of details. So I'll open it up to questions now. Feel free to hit any of these or um, whatever you'd like. Thank you. <laughs> or you can just let me off the hook. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, so the question is, did I hit any dead ends, um, things that I tried but just were not working at all? Um, I would say that I feel that way a little bit about the chord-wise system. Like, I feel intuitively that it should work. Um, and it actually turns out to be very good at memorizing pieces. So I can, I can prompt it with a little bit of Mozart, and then it'll continue to generate like 45 seconds or a minute of Mozart perfectly. But it has a really hard time uh, moving away from training set and, and getting into kind of interesting new patterns. Um, and so I feel like there should be a way to get around that, but I feel like it's a little bit of a dead end right now. So that's part of why I moved over to Novice. Uh, in fact, go ahead. Just for example, I, how much music did you have total? Like how many minutes of music went into the training process? You know? Ooh. <laughs> Uh, the question is, how many minutes of training data did I put into it? And I knew someone was going to ask me that. <laughs> um, it is, it's actually a very large amount. I don't know it in minutes. Um, but it's, I, so I took data from, um, there's a classical archives where um, everyone has just submitted MIDI recordings of their pieces. So it'll have like the entire set of Chopin etudes, the entire set of Beethoven sonatas. It, it's really a pretty broad range of like all of the famous classical music um, pieces. 
So in the piano set, I wasn't finding I was limited by data. When I tried to do violin piano duos, then I was more, because there's a much smaller set for that. Thanks. Yes. Have people played with these types of models for things like bird song, for example, trying to understand what the encodings are and then playing it back to birds to see if the bird, <laughs> birds react? To, I don't know. That's a super interesting question. It's, uh, have we done models like this on bird songs or uh, like whale songs, I imagine? I do not know that answer, so it, it sounds like it could be really fascinating, but, but I don't know. But thank you. Um, should I do one more or should I call it? Okay, last question then. Uh, for either you or the professional musicians, what is the difference between gym samples and the, the, the real human musicians? Like what, can you qualitatively describe how they fail? Yep. Um, so, the, so, one thing that I would really love to see in these pieces, but that I don't see right now, is in music we have an idea of like one, one, and then go. So you, you have a theme, or like a, a short idea, and then you repeat the short idea, and then the third time you do it, it starts that way, but then it goes off into a longer idea. And occasionally I see here, but not, not regularly enough that I could say like, oh, it's really learned this. And I kind of would, expect a good good music model to, to get that. And that's one of those longer structure things that I'd love to be able to get. All right, thank you. I'm gonna pass it off.